When I first saw the adverts for Mercenaries, Plague of Destruction, back in 2004, my interest was immediately piqued. A sandbox title that gave you absolute freedom and revolved around making money by killing people and wrecking shit was a pretty small idea with my prepubescent mind. I've come back to the game around four times now, and while in each session I dislike the same niggling flaws and design choices, it still remains unchallenged in what it offers the player. The setup is immediate. North Korea's President Choi Kim is overthrown by his son, General Song, who begins the development of ballistic nuclear weapons. The world reacts to this with a multi-pronged invasion force involving the UN, South Korea and China, with the later two competing to gain control over Korea's future. The Russian Mafia get involved too, because of course they do. But with General Song evading capture, a hundred million dollar bounty is placed on his head, making the perfect opportunity for paid military contractors like yourself to make it big. Mercenaries does not have a particularly narrative driven plot. The story has already been told before, it's a war zone with a despotic leader that needs to be removed. It's North Korea itself as a setting and the ever present looter narrative that makes it oh so engaging. There are a handful of decently written characters. Your choice of three different mercs lends to some replayability as they offer different dialogue and personality flavours, from cold to sarcastic to psychopathic. There are some small buffs and being able to translate different dialogue in the cutscenes to give some negligible insight, but otherwise it's the same game. Anyway, the different task givers representing each national faction aren't anything to write home about, but all the performances are delivered in an earnest, pulpy fashion. I mentioned the ludonarrative aspect, and the minimalistic nature of the characters allows you the player to act in ways that befit yourself, and the incentive of millions of dollars for basically having a fun time would sound like a pretty good deal to most. You're not the good guy in the story. You're profiting off a war with no accountability, and the different factions are complacent in this, having you do some ethically dubious tasks. These are the kind of actions that actual mercenaries do around the world, be they the French Foreign Legion or Blackwater. The real character of the game is the North Korean battlefield itself. I've played many games, but few capture the desolation and grimness of war that pervades Mercenaries' world. So many other games brush off any thought of the greater scale of a conflict, and the impacts it would leave on a country. Mercenaries shows us up and close. North Korea is in a state of destitution and ruin. Bombed highways and burned out hamlets signify this ceaseless fighting. The few cities you go to are deapolated messes of broken infrastructure and rubble. It's made better with the stellar soundtrack of orchestral pieces that add that emotion and ambience to the different environments and combat zones you'll traverse. The main theme is of particular note. Depending on which faction you back the most, North Korea either gets a slightly hopeful future or remains a failed state. Woohoo. Does this all matter? Well, yes, in adding a sense of morality and weight to where you are, not just in the carnage you commit. The only other game that does something similar is Far Cry 2 with its brutal and rough combat. Another game where you play as a mercenary. But what about the gameplay? Well, to get at General Song, you have to first take down his lieutenants, which are categorised into a deck of cards with a pyramid structure to each suit. The higher cards represent more valuable bounties, with Song being the Ace of Diamonds. Collecting bounties provides intel for Ace rank commanders, essentially the bosses of the game. Busting these guys to nab intel is how you beat the game. Everything else is a means to an end. While you can find low level targets across the map, their intel worth is minimal. Rather, you have to work with the different factions completing 2-3 to three contracts each before catching higher targets, thus getting the prerequisite amount of intelligence to take down an ace. You do this again 3 more times before the credits roll, split across 2 maps, and if that sounds simplistic or formulaic, it's because it is. While Mercenaries at first presents a broad, demanding world of different objectives, you can ignore most of them and just do your own thing. It's a straightforward game with few deviations or surprises, and the minimal amount of storytelling allows you to move on to whatever interests you next. It's shocking to play a sandbox which isn't filled with bloat and useless digressions to pad out the game time. Mercenaries is about 20 hours long, which is short compared to contemporary examples, but you don't care when you're moving between well-crafted mission to actually completing optional and worthwhile exploration, because no one tries to stop you. If you get tired of contracts, you can head into the countryside, plant some C4 and reduce a century's your temple to rubble. Because you can and why not? The missions do function much like in GTA. You go to a task giver, you spend a few minutes driving to some place where you go full Mongolian using your various equipment and support options. The later missions do have more complex activities like escorting, defending people or places, and there are bonus tasks which are usually extensions of the main job for some extra cash. 
Ironically, the North Koreans take a back seat in the later acts, where you're fighting proxy wars between quote-unquote allied sides, destroying their command posts and armies. The missions themselves are generally pretty fine. You often get to try out powerful vehicles and weapons, and even the journey there is filled with explosions and skirmishes, making your task just a small step in a larger fight. Not all missions are golden though. One is you hiking up a mountain to find and destroy the wreckage of a plane crash, then it asks you to rescue a pilot on the other side of the mountain. This is hard when you only have a few minutes, the pilot is in a moving vehicle, and any form of transport is now a burning wreck. It isn't fun getting run down by the truck you're trying to hijack, nor is it when the pilot jumps out of the vehicle you're now driving, getting killed like the absolute fuckwit that he is. Who you work for matters when trying to stay on a faction's good side. If you piss them off too much, they'll attack you on the side, and you need to pay a fine to get back in their good graces. This makes playing the mafia really annoying, since they antagonize everyone and the rewards are mostly of a novelty value, and don't make up the relationship damages inflicted. But because the Mafia runs the shop where you spend your money for weapons and vehicles, you have to be at least neutral or all your cash becomes completely worthless as they bar you access. Outside of the contracts, the low level bounties are some of the best parts of the game actually. There's frequent NK outposts, some of which contain one of the 52. How you engage them is totally up to you. Throw down a few airstrikes and level their heavy weapons in encampments. Snipe them from a distance, sneak in for a surprise attack, or just nab a tank and kill every fucker that gets between you and the bounty. With the bounties themselves, you can either subdue them with a bash to the head and some handcuffs, then call in a helicopter to pick them up, or you can bag them and tag them, though the reward is split and you get less intel. You want to do the former as more money the better, but this means you're going to be calling the helicopter as you slowly carry some guy to it dozens and dozens of times, and it gets old after the first few bounties. It's still less annoying than finding a military base, leveling it with some rockets, then being told, oh yeah, there was actually a dude between the tanks you just splashed. Oh, oh thanks, you, you couldn't tell me that earlier? There are also side activities in collecting or destroying hidden items and doing challenges that either give you cash, unlockables, or boost your relationship with a faction. The previously mentioned ace contracts are some of the real stand-up moments of the game. You're given a huge range of support options that take on swarms of enemy units, Eventually, you'll level the entire map in order to secure your target. Mechanically, Mercenaries plays like a typical TPS from the mid-2000s, loose on the realism and fast-paced. The selection of weaponry ain't half bad, though unbalanced. SMGs are a waste of time with their meager damage output, while rifles are fucking ruthless and not just killing dudes but taking down vehicles as well. The starting M4 is definitely better than most other weapons you encounter, and since firearms all share the same ammo pool, getting restocked is a non-problem, and that carries over to the heavier ordnance. Your Merc can carry around some C4, which is pretty good at controlled demolitions, but there are so many RPGs just lying around, turning a lot of the vehicles into scrap before long. Considering 90% of your tasks involve destroying something, not having the RPG or the later anti-tank launcher as one of your two weapons is questionable. No matter what you choose, the guns like good, punchy sound effects, often feeling closer to plastic air rifles rather than lethal tools. While functional, on-foot combat lacks proper refinement. You have a health bulb which can regenerate up to 20 when hit below that, but that doesn't matter when health kits and ammo are almost always near where you're fighting. It's hard to die from conventional means. No, what will kill you are the ever-prevalent RPG-equipped troopers and falling. Rocket dudes are a major pain. They can keep firing over and over again, far faster than you can, and will willingly blow themselves up if you get close to them. Because of their weapon splash damage, you will frequently stumble from a blast as they fire another one, finishing you off. Also, I'm fairly certain a well-trained battle-hardened warrior wouldn't die from a fucking fall like that. What bullshit is- However, once you get tired of the bullshit, you can just hop into one of the many vehicles in the game. Cars handle fairly well, though the physics are strange with really quick turns and bouncy impacts. Tanks have absurd off-road traction, which will make scaling mountains a non-problem. You're given a fairly decent supply of shells to crush most forces from a distance. Hijacking one can really turn the tide of a battle, though it's always a risky endeavour as they can knock you out just as well. Helicopters are really helpful with the lack of a fast travel feature, however, some of the more interesting rides are really difficult to catch but when you do, they're pretty awesome at clearing bases and demolishing enemy forces. Unfortunately, the abundance of absurd anti-air SAMs all over the place handicaps airborne attacks. Missiles do not bend like that. 
Otherwise, it's pretty good shit. It's made better with the great diversity of vehicles from different countries and eras, which creates this really immersive contrast between armies. North Koreans have aging 20th century Soviet tech, the Chinese have modified Eastern armaments, and the Western factions like the Allies or South Koreans have a lot of multi-purpose equipment. There's a lot of good reasons to hold onto a modern tank or APC since you can accomplish far more with them. Few games actually illustrate the superiority and disparities between nations with their armaments. Of course, Merc's most lasting mechanic was the shop system. Players could use the funds awarded through Mayhem and missions to buy weapon supplies, vehicles and airstrikes. Buying your own gear is something Far Cry and Just Cause would completely run with, giving players far more freedom to their gameplay. And for a first time, it's done pretty well. Your PDA works as your world map, database of various miscellaneous items, and info on locations and missions. Through this, you can access the black market, where you can buy almost anything. After selecting the product you want, you need to have a good clearing to throw down a beacon to call in a helicopter to drop off the goods. Now, airstrikes are pretty simple. You either use a beacon or a satellite feed to call in a variety of heavy ordnance for devastating effect. It's pretty fucking cool dropping a carpet bomb on a column of enemy tanks. It's a real shame it lacks proper refinements to be a truly useful system. Buying shit is expensive, which is fine, but the costs are never offset by the benefits. To give an example, to clear this enemy region to complete a contract worth 150k, you need to destroy a bunker with a special bunker buster missile, which costs you 300k apiece. See the problem? It can really feel like you're wasting your time and effort on an objective which will result in a net loss, so why even bother? Besides just making me hesitant, the level design is happy to place radar jammers that block any support options, and by the time you've removed them, there's no point now. Poorly designed choices like this is what really hurts mercenaries the most, but the foundations for the later, arguably better games are laid here, and I have to give credit to that. In conclusion, Mercenaries is a pretty fucking neat game. It's like a rough diamond, it's got the makings of something beautiful, it just needs more refinement, but it's still good enough to work as blood money. Mercs has a nice pace and tone to its gameplay, which makes it very compelling, even when it's technically out of date. After all these years from when I first rented it, I can confidently recommend this game for its quality and inspiration had for future titles and the overall quantity of solid entertainment.